Okay, the next camera I'm going to talk to you about is my old Fuji GW690 III Professional 6x9 medium format rangefinder camera. This is called the Texas Leica um, as a nickname. Why? Because it's a big, massive rangefinder camera. So an oversized Leica. So big, like Texas, you know. Anyway, it's a, a fantastic, fantastic piece of kit. Um, originally designed for Japanese tour groups. You know, the big coach loads of, of tourists that would go to specific spots so that what they could do was the um, tour, tour guide could take massive group photographs with these or could take group photographs with these and print them out and because of the massive negative size, which is six centimetres by nine centimetres effectively, all the faces would be nice and clear and crisp. OK, so this gave you massive detail in what is basically an oversized com compact camera. Very easy to use. You didn't need any training um, in it effectively because it's so, so simple. So it takes 120 roll film, OK, like you'd see in a Hasselblad, a Bronco, a Mir, something like that. Okay, but the difference over those cameras, instead of having a great big square box that you would have to stand on a tripod and whiz around like that and look down and clunk and so on, you know, I'm talking back to my Hasselblad days, um, you had something that operated like a normal camera. And fantastic it was too. Now I bought this back in the year 2000 as something so that I could steal the march on other travel stock photographers. Okay, the stock photography market was pretty much dominated with 35mm. Um, all of us were using Fujichrome Velvia RVP50 slide film, transparency film, if you like, because it was so much tighter on the grain, so much sharper, vibrant colours, perfect for, for magazines, except 35mm is not massive. This has a negative, or transparency, five times the size. So basically you get your five times larger transparency, you whack that down on an on a, on a editor's light table and they go, wow. And they don't need to get their loop out and squint through the lens at the other ones. They just look at that and go, wow, there's our quality. That's what we're buying. So let me run you through the camera. First thing, I'm just going to point out, it's not 100% standard because it would have had originally a lens hood, a built-in lens hood here, okay? I actually took that off, I, I cut it off to fit a coking filter holder. This allowed me to put a polarizing filter on, which you had set by eye first and then drop in, in position, because of course you're not looking through the lens like with an SR. Or I could put a warm-up filter, fluorescent balancing filters, coloured filters, black and white, what have you. So, so the original lens hood no longer is on this one. Okay. So I'm going to run you through what you've got. So you've got your lock button here. Okay. You've got your film advance lever. Now that, because you've got such a large amount of film, you have to do two strokes with. Okay, it's so a double stroke. You've got your frame counter in the top there. You can select here between 16 exposure 220 film, 8 exposure 120 film, or 4 exposure half length 120 roll film. Okay, I've never seen a 4 exposure one, you know, 120 film myself, but there you go. Um, I imagine for tour groups that'd be perfect. If you've only got sort of like one stop, two stops, you can bang off four shots, process it, jump done. Then you've got your hot shoe for a flash. And you've got a little um, spirit level so that you can balance it up. You look down and you go, oh yeah, yeah, that's level. Bang. Okay. So that's the front and the top. On the back is a little film gate. So what you used to do was rip off the end of the film packet. It said what film it was. Slide that in there. Just so you had a handy reference that it might be an ISO 50 Velvia or an ISO 400 Nearpan or, or what have you. So you knew what was in there. Okay, you've got your eyepiece, and then, oh yeah, so you've got three different strapping points here. This allowed you to have a neck strap or a hand strap, okay, hand strap to hold it like that. You can direct people, go, you stand there, you stand there, you, I can't see you, 
You're, you're short, you stand behind a tall person just because you think, oh, I'm shy, and I'm messing around. You're messing up the photo for everybody. Get out of the front. I want to see you right slap bang, front and center. Stop being shy, stop being silly. Oh, those days of weddings. It's brilliant, brilliant for massive wedding group photos as well, and brilliant for corporate events of photos. Anyway, so opening it up, what you have here is your little release buttons, okay, to release the films. Now, what you would do, inside the old 120 roll films, okay, you had a spool, okay. The film would be wound around this. I haven't got a spare sample film to show you. You pop this in here, push it up at the bottom, make sure it connects, okay? You would lead the film across, but of course it's got nothing to wind on. So you have one from an empty one, which you would also pop inside. And the end of that film would come across onto here. And then you would wind it a couple of times until you got to the, the, the indicator that you're in the right place. You've got your film pressure gate here, that's sprung loaded, so that would press the film flat to make it nice and sharp. Close the back, wind it on a couple more times, and then you'll be ready to take pictures. So anyway, I've got one each side, just, just basically to store it. So if I set my aperture right open and my shut speeds, To one second, can I fire the shutter? So that's how it works. I can't obviously fire the shutter because I've got no film in there, so I can't technically cock it. I close the back, lock it off. Anyway, so on here you have your focusing ring. Okay, minimum focusing distance of one meter. Okay, then up to 10 meters, then infinity. Okay, these are your aperture rings. Okay, this gives you, or aperture scale rings, this gives you an idea of your depth of field. Never actually understood what the hell that meant or how to do it. Now, up here on this front ring, and this was something that the hood got in the way of as well, you've got your shutter speeds. Okay, 500th of a second right down to one second and then t for timed exposure okay normally you'd want to be using this as a bare minimum at 125th of a second 250 would be better if you're hand holding it just because it is quite weighty here's the aperture ring okay there's your numbers there line up with the red so maximum aperture 3.5 wide open if you go for a larger aperture like 2 1.4 what have you your depth of field is really reduced goes right down to f32 now all the old Leica poses they used to bang on about bokeh bokeh this bokeh that oh it's an amazing bokeh oh yeah the Leica's got the best bokeh in the world bokeh 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 which just meant how your you out focus bits looks well do not really matter because you've got five times less film size so you know it can look as as, as good as it as it can on a Leica m6 which was a, the contemporary of the time, perhaps, but it isn't going to match this in any shape or form. So get your bokeh, stop being pretentious on the photo forums back in the day, and just crack on. So uh, what else is there to show you? Well, that's obviously the, the rangefinder window, and that's the viewing window. Okay, so if you come close, like we've just done with the, the, the camera that we're filming on, you would have parallax error, so it would be slightly offset. But if you look through the rangefinder, um, sorry, if you look through the the viewing window, you see the range on it and you see these, basically these four lines that form a rectangle. That's your viewing area, okay? They're kind of highlighted, lit up sort of thing. Um, not lit up electronically because this is a completely manual camera. There's no electronics in this whatsoever. You don't have batteries to die on you or anything. Anyway, as you focus it, to the range you're at, you'll see these guidelines move, okay? And as you move yourself, obviously you get there as well. Now, there's also a central, 
range finder, which is very difficult for me to see in this light because I've got the two lights either side of me. That's because if I'm just lit from above with this this um, light, it's horrendous. So um, it's difficult for me to look at the moment. I'm, I'm photographing contra jour against the light, darlings. Um, but yeah, so you you have this this range finder, which as you focus it, things will align. So I'm going back now and I'm focusing on the camera there and that's nice and sharp. The two images, okay, the shadow image and the sharp image go across like that. Hang on, if I do it like this, they go across like that till they line up. Then it's sharp, then it's in focus. Click the shutter, bang, job done. Uh, oh yes, on the bottom, so we've got a, a tripod mounting screw there. So you can pop on a tripod, use it in the studio if you want to. And you've got this. This is your film counter. So that's showing 198 um, on there. That's 198 times 10 shots. So this has taken 1,980 to 1,990 photographs. Okay. And that is your Fuji GW693 professional medium format rangefinder camera. Ka-ching. So, as my faithful, willing cameraman Abby pointed out, no batteries, no batteries, no electronics. Correct. Purely mechanical, purely manual. A more elegant weapon for a more civilized time. Okay, Appendix A, Exhibit A. Here's some of my old travel transparencies. I've just grabbed them from the loft. I've no idea what's on them. I'm gonna have a look. Oh, there's fireworks. Oh yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Now, those were stunning. I'm gonna have to work out how you can see these. Oh, here's some trees. That's the Black Virgin. France, this is, yeah, that's a grotto. Right, let's, let's have a look. So the, 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 the quality of these comparatively was stunning. I was rather hoping that I was picking up some stuff of Petra or something like that. You know, this, this camera, I bought it specifically, like I say, for the travel photography. The first trip was around Thailand in 2000 it's been around syria lebanon jordan uh and egypt as well um my images from petrol were stunning so what i'm gonna do i don't have this gonna work but we're gonna spin me round here you spin me right round baby right round like a record baby right round 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 now i don't know does that show can you see if through you it do it so it's like this so that the light's not shining right through it then you can still see it does that show up all right? That looks amazing. <laughs> Does it? Yeah. It looks amazing? Yeah. I'm amazed. Oh, that one's even better. That's good. Does it look good on that? Yeah. That's amazing. Oh, let's have a look. What else have we got? <laughs> a very bright light. I, I really should be... Um... Can you see it? Yeah, I think it actually kind of looks better in the phone than it does in... Yeah. That's awesome. Right, so what I'm going to show you just as... And aside, a weird one is that is the size. This here, this dark bit, is the size of the whole frame. This is a roll of 35mm Fuji Chrome Velvia. So you can see, if I just pull it out slightly, the width of the film is about half from top to bottom because you ignore the sprocket holes obviously and look at that there's about three that way massive massive quality difference and that is that so it is uh, well it's good night from him Good night from me.